Okay, so let me just quickly talk about what is Spark. So I am full. Of, I think very rarely I read from the slide. This is one of those occasions. Apache Spark is a general purpose cluster. After that, there is one thing written in memory. Ignore this. Ignore this. Okay, and then complete the sentence. General purpose cluster computing system. Right? Apache Spark is a general purpose cluster computing system. Does it remind you of something? It must be. It must be reminding you of MapReduce, isn't it? It reminds you of MapReduce. So what is the differentiator? What is the differentiator? In memory nature, right? That is the fastest I can show you the difference, right? It's the in-memory nature. So in Spark, there is something called RDD. We will be talking about it very soon. So RDD stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. Basically, they allow you to do the distributed processing in memory altogether, and you don't even have to worry about it. For you, you will specify the operations and RDDs will take care of doing the operations in memory across the systems. That is the biggest USP. Again, USP stands for unique selling point of Spark. Okay, and of course, since it is an in-memory nature, so the processing is going to be faster and hence the uses. The Spark, basically Spark is used for fast data analytics. Uh, the best thing is Spark provides uh, the APIs, APIs in the languages Java, Scala, Python. With 1.5.2, they have even provided the APIs for uh, even provided the APIs for R as well. Okay, so you can write your Java, uh, Spark programs in any of the languages. We'll be writing it in Scala, of course. And uh, not only this, uh, other wrappers, right? So just like Hadoop is an ecosystem, Spark is also an ecosystem, the computing ecosystem. Okay, so it is not that you are just going to write the core, uh, uh, you know, Spark programs. You can write some of the programs on Spark SQL. You can write some of the programs for machine learning part of it, ML Lab. We'll be showing you one or two examples of them as well, right? Even though you don't know what is machine learning, of course not, but Let's say if you have to apply ALS something, you know, alternating least square methods, etc., etc. How do you use that using MLLab? So those libraries are exposed, and you can use them, provided that you know how to use that, right? So this is some, you know, all of these wrappers are available. You can use them uh, eventually for uh, your specific uh, process, uh, processing systems, right? So this is something which is. Uh, one of the USPs of Spark. Before I come to the Spark ecosystem and I start explaining the components, Shashikant has a question that did you say memory across systems? Yes. So the data is there in the RAM of one machine, then a bit of data is there in the RAM of machine number two, machine number three. You don't have to worry. You will just expose the operation and then RDD will take care of abstracting the details from you. And you'll see some of those things happening when I'll start explaining some, uh, uh, you know, operations like uh, there is something called uh, server log analysis example in the next module and all. You will be seeing some of those things in action. Okay. Now, coming to the ecosystem of Spark. So this is how the ecosystem of Spark looks like. At the bottom of it, you have the core Spark engine. Uh, this is the place wherein you would be programming most of the time. Your Spark applications will always hit here, most of them. And then you have multiple wrappers, okay? You have wrappers like Spark SQL, you have a wrapper for Spark Streaming, MLLab, GraphX, Spark R. So Spark R, well, I'll, I'll just quickly touch base on it because R is, you, you know, you need the understanding of R language on it. But yes, I'll be able to show you some part of it. Similarly, the same thing goes for MLM and graphics. You know, until unless you are into the domain of doing the graph processing or MLM related uh, machine learning uh, related algorithms and all, of course, you need that information. But 
assuming that you know which algorithm you are implementing, how to implement that MLF using MLF, GraphX, those are the things which we'll be covering in, I think, uh, the coming modules. And uh, then Spark Streaming is a component which allows you to do, uh, to write streaming kind of applications wherein you get the data streamed from, uh, you know, multiple systems. In fact, our project will have a nice example of, of Spark Streaming. I have designed a project on those lines, okay? So that would be a nice thing to uh, visit. And then, uh, if you have, let's say, some sort of SQL uh, operations, Spark SQL is the answer for it. So it's like, uh, you know, structured data analysis, if you are trying to do, then Spark SQL actually helps you to do exactly the same things, okay? And uh, then there is something called Blink DB. Well, data frame and ML pipelines, etc. these orange color things are still in the beta versions, okay? Uh, in fact, even MLlib also is, the MLlib and graphics are also the developer versions as of now. They are not yet production ready because many things are getting migrated to in, into it and they are undergoing the changes, but still, you should start getting a look and feel of it so that whenever they become mature, at least you can start working on them, right? And for the first time ever in the history of Spark courses, we'll be covering it for the first time in this, uh, you know, um, uh, in this batch. Data frames is the new kind of a data, uh, underlying data structure, which has been introduced, uh, you know, in Spark 1.5.2, and it is, it will be matured forward, right? So we'll be talking about it when we'll be talking about Spark SQL. BlinkDB is something wherein there is no update as of now. BlinkDB is kind of an approximate database or approximate SQL. So BlinkDB is all about, let's say, I give you the example of multiple tweets. So somebody says there are 400,800 some number of tweets. You are not really interested in this. You are interested in if somebody tells you, hey, for this event, the number of tweets as of now are more than 400,000, right? If somebody tells you, you get the idea. You do not get the exact number, but you get the idea. This is called approximate SQL. So BlinkDB, whenever it will be released, it is not even released as of now. So whenever it will be released, it basically focuses on those lines that you want some approximate answers. You want to know the trends of your data so approximate databases help you. So they say the accuracy is, the accuracy of the result is something which they compromise, but what the gain in turn, turn of it, or uh, you know, as the bargain of it is the speed at which they give you the result. So BlinkDB, it's not available as of now, but yes, it will be released sometime, uh, you know, soon, right? Uh, before I, um, so Vikas, I'll just answer your question in a short while. Okay. So <coughs> this this particular slide basically talks about the very same thing which I just talked. It's nothing but just a textual representation of whatever I just said. MLF, graphics, Spark R, and all. 